going on guys so this is a topic I've wanted to talk about for a little while now um, ever since Mario and Luigi Paper Jam came out uh, it's been getting me thinking uh, as you guys know I got the game I unboxed it I've been uh, talking about it in recent videos I've been loving it still playing through it it's just uh, phenomenal love this game but um, it, it's a crossover of sorts of Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario it's still a Mario and Luigi game through and through with the gameplay but the story and elements of both series have sort of merged with this game. So it's actually uh, gotten me thinking about the Mario RPG games, the, the, that genre as a whole, and what are some of my favorites and some of, them, some of my um, just moments with them. And, you know, I, 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 and I want to know, too, like, respond. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what your guys' favorite Mario RPGs are. Or least favorite. Um, as you and as you guys know, the first one to come out was Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars, back in the Super Nintendo. This is back in the 90s. I played this in the late 90s. Um, first Mario RPG game I played before there were any others. Before Paper Mario or Mario Luigi even existed, and um, this is phenomenal. It's just this game is an instant classic. I you know I've done everything I could. I've got all the hidden hidden areas and items and equipment. I've gotten all characters level 30. I've beaten uh, Smithy, so I've beaten the game. I've beaten the Extra Boss Kulex. Uh, you know, I've played this game multiple times. Uh, it's been a couple of years since I played it, so I think the last time I played it was my senior year of high school. But uh, I can plug it in today and just play through it and still have as much fun now as I did back then. Um, it, it was very revolutionary for its time because it was one of the first RPGs, first turn-based RPGs, to introduce the notion of timed hits which has carried over to Mario and Luigi and Paper Mario, as well as some other RPG games as well. And it really gave you more control over, because at that time, turn-based RPGs didn't give you a lot of, it was more or less, it was more or less menu. You know, you pick your attack, you watch the attack happen, and that was it. This gave you a little more control over your battles, and it, you know, allowed you to come out, come out on top, which was really cool. Um, and I liked I like I like that aspect. I liked it back then. I like it now. Um, it's just like I said. So it was a little bit revolutionary for not just I mean, not just Mario RPGs, but for the RPG genre, the turn-based RPG genre as a whole. And so it's really cool. But this game's instant classic. I mean, it's it's probably my favorite of the entire Mario RPG series, and I don't think that's going to be changing anytime soon, just because it's it's such a classic. Um, made by SquareSoft before they were Square Enix, um, but this is this is so good. Um, after that. People have been wanting a sequel to this game for years, and myself included. I've wanted it for years. But, in order to do a sequel to this game, they would need to get Square Enix to do it. They would need to sign on to do it, use a lot of their original characters and set pieces that were in this game that they have copyrighted, unfortunately. Things like Geno and Mallow, which uh, just doesn't happen. Um, the few times we get anything from this game, Square Enix demands like big bags of money from Nintendo, which is... I think it's a little bit ridiculous, but hey, you know, I guess they're a company, you know, they gotta do what they gotta do. But um, it looks like a sequel to this game isn't happening anytime soon, and that actually saddens me. But, but, we still get terrific games in its spot. It, like I said, we have two different series that sort of came out after this. The first one being Paper Mario, started off with Nintendo 64. Great game, great game. And it's gotten three different sequels since then. Mario & Luigi started in 2003. 2003 on the Game Boy Advance, I want to say. Yeah, 2001 was Paper Mario, and 2003 was Mario & Luigi on the Game Boy Advance. And since then, we've gotten four more sequels to that game. So there's five Mario & Luigi games and four Paper Mario games. And for the most part, they've all been terrific outside of one game. They've all been terrific, and it's just... It's, it's just I really like this. As far as which do I prefer, um, for years I was big on Paper Mario, really big, but in the past recent years I've actually come to love Mario and Luigi more. I've taken a step back and looked at both series as a whole, and I like Paper Mario for what it does. Uh, Paper Mario sort of I guess it's more of a traditional, well, traditional, like, in the RPG sense, while at the same time being, um, uh, obviously with the art style, the paper gimmick, you know, um, really unique. But Mario & Luigi is what I would consider, like, if, without, not, not even Super Mario RPG, because Super Mario RPG was obviously very heavily influenced by Square and by Final Fantasy and all that, but 
Mario and Luigi is what I would consider when you look at all three styles. You look at your Mario RPG from Square, you look at Paper Mario from Intelligent Systems, and you look at Mario and Luigi from Alpha Dream. You look at all three, and the one that screams Mario Brothers to you is going to be Mario and Luigi. At least that's how it is for me, I mean. Um, I look at Mario and Luigi and I think to translate this platforming series into a Japanese RPG, this is how I feel it would translate. Um, Paper Mario and Super Mario RPG sort of, like I said, do their own things, whereas when you translate the world of Mario and who the character and this game encompasses into an RPG, I feel like Mario and Luigi signifies that the most out of all three. Um, and I, that's just what I that's just what I feel and that's part of what makes it so enjoyable. Not just that, but when it comes to the series, I feel like Paper Mario has had sort of a it started off amazing and got better and then sort of had a rocky road. Uh, Mario and Luigi has only gotten better, I feel. It's each each installment has been consistent, improving on each one, I feel. Um, and they've all been terrific, terrific games. I can play any of them, you know, Superstar Saga, Partners in Time, you know, I can play them all. And they're just, they feel so good. Um, as far as what my favorites are, one of my favorite games of the Mario RPGs has always been Paper Mario of the Thousand Year Door. This is the second Paper Mario game. This is, this is when, in my opinion, Paper Mario was at its peak, was this game. It improved on everything from the first game. Had a brilliant story, brilliant overworld. Um, it's just, the, the game is, it, it's aged terrifically. It's just, it, it's really, really fun. Um, like I said, it, it, it's basically like the first game, but improved in every single way. It's just, uh, you know, I have it, have it complete. This is my original copy I've had for, oh God, for like 15, not 15, but like 12 years. When did it come out? 2004? I think it's came out in 2004. Um, maybe 2003, who knows? Maybe not 2004, I think. So I've had this for like 11, 12 years. Um, and, um... I guess I love this game. This is probably my favorite. Actually, no, it is my favorite Paper Mario game. Followed closely by the first one, and then Super Paper Mario. Super Paper Mario, I don't hate as much as a lot of people do. I felt Super Paper Mario, well, yes, it's not as good as this one or the N64 one, um, but Super Paper, Super, Paper, Super Paper Mario was a really neat experiment, and it took it into a more of an action RPG platformer approach, which I really liked, and I really loved the 2D and 3D switching. Uh, really nice. Uh, but... It still wasn't like this. Um, this is something I really liked. Um, as far as Mario and Luigi, my favorite game in the series is Mario and Luigi Bowser Inside Story by far. I absolutely love this game. It puts Bowser in the spotlight, which is a long time coming. I would I would actually argue this is more of a Bowser game than a Mario and Luigi game. Like I feel like Mario and Luigi are more or less supporting characters. I feel like this Bowser is the star here. And for the most part, he really is. You see most of the game from his eyes. You explore the world with him. Um, and it's just, it, it, it's great, you know? The Mario and Luigi segments are still there, too. I'm not saying, like, oh, it's all Bowser and Mario and Luigi are kind of a side thing. No. I mean, I'm talking about from their, from the perspective of the game, I guess, they're, I, they feel more like supporting characters. But, like, as far as their gameplay goes, they still, they have a whole world to explore inside of Bowser. Their gameplay is still there. Again, improved on, approved upon, you know, coming off of Superstar Saga and then Partners in Time. Um, so it's just really good. This the overworld is nice. It brought back one of my favorite villains of not just Mario but in gaming overall, which is Fawful. I love Fawful. I know he. Um, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Just just warning you guys. Okay, in this game, Fawful does die. He dies at the end of the game. And I understand that, um, but I, I kind of wish there'd be, like, some way to bring him back. Like, he gets, there's a shroud of him somewhere out there, or he gets cloned, or someone wishes upon some other star thing in the Mario universe, and he comes back, you know. I kind of want him to come back in some, some way, shape, or form, but I, I absolutely love this game. This is definitely my favorite of the Mario and Luigi games. Um, now, if we're talking about least favorite, Mario and Luigi is very hard, because I don't really have a least favorite for Mario, Mario and, and Luigi. They're all phenomenal games. Um, I'm loving Paper Jam. Uh, I, Bowser Inside Story is phenomenal. Um, both Super Saga and Partners in Time are really good. Partners in Time, I feel, gets a lot of flack. I actually really like Partners in Time. It does things a little bit differently. Um, it, I mean, it's not as open world as Super Saga was, but for the way the game is presented, it doesn't need to be. I guess that's the way I see it with the whole ripples in time and you access different 
plot point, different points in time with different areas. I don't know. It's just I never had an issue with Partners in Time. Um, if I if I really had to pick a least favorite, it would have to be either Superstar Saga or potentially Dream Team. Dream Team, I can say I don't have a full opinion on because I own the game, but I played. I want to say I played up until Bowser finally like joins in, in the story where he starts to go and kidnap Peach. He jumps in the Dream World. And I played, I think, maybe two or three hours after that. And that's about it. I loaned it to a friend after that. Um, and I haven't actually played any more since. So I need to definitely pick it back up and play it. Probably, um, you know, I want to I want to definitely after Paper Jam. But, um, so Dream Team I can't say too much on. I will say with Dream Team, though, is it didn't hook me as much as the other Mario Luigi games, although it was very fantastic and phenomenal what I did play. And there are a lot of tutorials, a lot of dialogue. Like, it's an RPG, there's going to be dialogue, tutorials. But it seemed like there was a lot more than usual. And me, personally, when I play a game, it's just like, all right, all right, all right, let me play the game, you know? It's just like, ah! But, um, but yeah, so it'd either be Dream Team or Superstar Saga. Superstar Saga, I, I still love. It's a fantastic game. Um, that's why I say it's so hard. It's so hard picking a least favorite for Mario and Luigi because they're such consistently good. They're just, it's a great series. As for Paper Mario, this is, what, Nintendo, what, what, what is this? Like, you know, what, what is this? What, what did you make here, Intelligence Systems? Like, why? Like, why? Why? I mean, when the 3DS was first being shown off with a Paper Mario game, it looked like it went back to the first two. It looked great. Oh, then Miyamoto offered a few suggestive things. Intelligent Systems took it way too far. I don't think it was Miyamoto's fault. Miyamoto just said, you know, use the sticker, sticker aspect more and try to use some more established Mario characters. Which you can still do that without all the problems that this game fucking has. Intelligent Systems just really fucked this game up. Um, I don't know what they did here. Battling is pointless now. There's no experience points. It's basically, it went back to the turn base of the first two games while taking out everything that made the battles good. That's pretty much how I can describe it. It's like, it's like, you, you, it's like, okay, imagine you were, you were, um, um, imagine you're seven years old, right? You may, you have this awesome, you turn, you're turning eight, you get this awesome birthday cake, right? It has, a, it's, you know, it's, it's cooked just right. It's, you know, um, got the ingredients you love. It's got this nice, you know, f nice, nice freaking um, icing on it. Got some strawberries and stuff. You know, it's like it, the most amazing cake. Maybe it's got ice cream in the middle, you know, amazing cake. Each part of it you like. Then fast forward 10 years later, right? And it's like, oh, I'm turning... I'm turning 18 now, you know? It's like, now you get a cake, and it uses the same ingredients, but there's no filling, no icing, no strawberries. It's just that cake, and it's not even cooked well. <laughs> That's pretty much an analogy I can say for this game. It's like, they're like, oh, we're going back to the originals, but... Yeah. And I'm just like, you know. I'll be honest, I haven't beaten this game. I got somewhere in World 2 dash whatever. There's a lot of weird stuff with the stickers. I just do not like how you explore the overworld with them. Uh, or the, not, it's not even overworld. It's just like a level by level thing. And the way they do the original characters, I mean, not, I mean, sorry, the mar, the established characters is just, it's so bland. Like, it's, it's, there's nothing unique about the characters in this game. Bowser, he went back to being the villain, which is fine. He was the villain in the original Paper Mario, but the difference is he had characterization Really good characterization in the original Paper Mario. This game, he grabs the sticker crown and he roars and breathes fire and that's it. You don't he doesn't even talk. It's like it's bullshit. So this game, I don't know why this exists. Like this is just ugh. I, I don't know. I mean, I know there's some people who like it for what it is, and that's fine, you know, cool, enjoy it. I'm glad that someone else is able to see something in this game that I cannot, but I, I hate this game. Yeah, I can you know, I can't really there's nothing else I can really say. But, um, but yeah, this, besides that one game, I love the Mario RPGs. It's definitely um, one of my favorite series and one of my favorite um, subgenres of the Mario franchise. So, anyways, guys, like I said, let me know. What are your favorite Mario RPGs? What are your least favorite ones? You know, what's some of your uh, favorite things about the series? You know, let me know. Post some comments below. And uh, thank you for watching. I will check you guys later. More videos are coming soon. Stay tuned and uh, peace out.